You know, considering what Timari's signature suite is, I kind of wish she had gone with Flan instead of Custard as her pre-cure identity. If only to remind me of my favorite Disgaea character. <laughs> So the second episode sees the introduction of the Yellow Precure. In other words, the one who purposely acts overly cutesy in order to overtake everyone else in the popularity polls. Yeah, I see through your tactics, little one, but let me tell you. I am not so easily swayed by such cutesy pandering tactics. Ain't that right, guys? Anyway, before we get to the introduction of the younger version of the greatest Marvel heroine ever, we continue from the last episode with the introduction of the world's most portable bakery. Yeah, apparently that little toy bag that's currently listed on the Japanese Amazon for about 10,000 yen... Seriously, Japanese toys are not cheap. ...is in fact the shop that appeared in the final episode of Maho Girls. Which, by the way, I hope Ichika packs that thing up every night, or else their little hideout that's in a public park is gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Really should consider redecorating this thing to make it stand out less. Maybe they should put something like this on the front to make it look more generic. Anyway, inside the bakery, Ichika meets another fairy, or rather an astral projection of one, who's just called the Elder. Yeah, elderly fairies in Precure really don't get a lot of respect. I think like there's this one in Futari who also didn't get any real name, and then the one in Fresh, I think his name was Teramisu, at least that's what the wiki says, but I can't for the life of me remember a time when they actually called him that. As such, I'm just going to name this guy after my favorite chain of cream puff makers. So, Beard Papa gives Ichika the whole you wanna become a magical girl spiel, and Ichika agrees as long as she can make and eat as many sweets as she wants. Thank god Kyubei didn't get to her first, she'd sell her soul for cake for god's sake. Anyway, at school, Ichika meets Himari Arisugawa by headbutting the poor girl. Yeah, Ichika, just because some overrated football players do it, doesn't mean you should follow suit. Anyway, understandably, Himari makes some serious distance between them, but not before Ichika sees the book she was reading, The Science of Sweets. Let me guess, written by Alton Brown. I love that guy. Anyway, the two meet again when they both try to buy the same custard pudding. They end up letting a member of their target audience take it, but then decide to make their own. Ichika again proves to be Gordon Ramsay's worst nightmare when she burns the caramel several times. You're cooking in a burnt pan! Himari then tries to explain the proper way of making caramel pudding, by giving a several hours long lecture. Okay, I think you're taking the Elton Brown approach a little bit too seriously there, girl. Actually, this does end up introducing a very interesting facet of her character. Himari is incredibly intelligent, but is also not the best at articulating her words, thus she rambles. Combine that with the fact that later in the episode, she says she's not good at reading other people's feelings, generates some rather uncomfortably familiar memories. Really, as someone who has Asperger's Syndrome, I relate to almost too much to this. I understand the feelings of isolation Himari felt when she couldn't join in the other kids' conversations. Thus, the only form of companionship she could turn to was her studies and hobbies. Now, of course, I don't want to just assume she has autism or anything, that would be kind of uncalled for. But considering Japan's societal standards still hasn't properly adjusted to deal with autism, I think a character like this and Elle from Death Though should be explored a little more. Those are just my general thoughts, so just take it with a grain of salt. Also, considering how much this guy loves sweets, maybe he should join the show. Yeah, never mind. Also, during Kimari's flashback, the kids mentioned somebody named Ronko singing on TV. Nah, couldn't be. Could it? Anyway, after a brief falling out, the two end up rebonding after Ichika starts reading from the same book Himari had. The two end up making a gigantic pudding mound. And yet, they didn't include the same kind of incredible animation they had in the last episode. What jip? Anyway, using a small portion of the massive mound of cholesterols, Ichika creates a little squirrel-shaped pudding for Himari. You can guess where this is going. A yellow monster, who reminds me a little bit too much of the guy from the worst Doctor Who episode ever, comes down and absorbs all the kiakiaru of the pudding. Ichika transforms to save the sweets the two work so hard on making, and Himari soon follows suit, becoming Cure Custard, the pre-cure of the squirrel pudding. No, no, bad dog, bad dog, I've already used your meat, I'm not gonna use you again! Much like Ichika's rabbit, Himari's squirrel attribute gave her better running speed. Thus, the two speedsters make quick work of the monster before he can make contact with a bunch of really annoying asshats, and the episode ends with them enjoying the fruits of their labor. Anyway, this was another good episode. Early on, I joked about the Yellow Cures being the most popular, but there is a reason behind that. Yellow Cures, in order to match up with their color, are often some of the most passionate when it comes to their interests and hobby. Seeing them so dedicated to their craft is very admirable. And while Himari does need to learn how to be a better talker, she is taking the right baby steps towards communicating with others, at least through physical, edible products. 
The animation and sound in this episode were really good. I love the lighting throughout, especially during the sunset, and the animation during the battle was very fluid with Custard's writing looking pretty damn impressive. Again, not a ton of fisticuffs, mostly just one really impressive looking rider kick admittedly, but it still looks damn good and never feels boring. This is helped by the soundtrack remaining fantastic throughout. Interestingly enough, it seems like each of the Precure are going to get their own unique transformation BGMs, which is really nice because that means that they each get their own unique flavor to them. And while they didn't have any amazingly well animated Beiki montages this time, there was a very nice insert song provided by Himari's VA playing throughout the battle of this episode. If this season is going to be remembered for anything, music is definitely going to be one of them, which yes includes the ending theme, which I forgot to mention last time. Or rather, I just wanted to get that damn earworm out of my head. <sighs> And that's all I have to say for this week. Be sure to join me next week when we take a look at the third episode and the introduction of the coolest Precure ever. Yeah, sorry, I just had to say that. Until then though, farewell for now my- Hold on, I think I hear a pointy thief in my kitchen. I knew it! Hey, come back here with that bling! <laughs>